blood runs. They all run. In the shadowy depths of zone, a monstrous figure stalks the grey alleys, Warwick. Once a man, he was twisted into a savage beast through agonizing experiments. His body, now fused with intricate machinery, pumps alchemical rage through his veins. Emerging from the darkness, Warwick relentlessly hunts the criminals who prey on the city's most vulnerable. The scent of blood drives him into a frenzy, and once he touches the air, none can escape his wrath. But as we eagerly await the next season of Arcane, many believe that Warwick's true identity will finally be revealed, and we are all expecting that it could be that Vendor, who was once the protector of the streets, that has been transformed into his terrifying monstrosity by singed cruel hand. The clues point to a tragic twist, as Vendor may have become the very beast that now haunts the city he once vowed to protect. Welcome lore lovers to another deep dive into the rich and mysterious world of League of Legends. Today we are unraveling the twisted tale of Warwick, the uncaged rat of Zone. From his tragic past to his monstrous transformation, we'll explore every dark corner of his lore. So sit back, relax and let's jump into the story. Warwick is a creature that prowls the dim alleys of Zone. A victim of brutal experiments that fused his body with intricate machinery, pumps and chambers now fill his veins with alchemical fury. Emerging from darkness, he hunts the criminals who terrorize the city's depths, driven into madness by the scent of blood. Once it is spilled, no one can evade him. Yet beneath the savage exterior lies the remnant of a man, a former gangster who had set aside his blade, taking on a new name in search of redemption. However, no matter how far he ran, the shadows of his past clung to him. Fragments of that life flicker in Warwick's mind, only to vanish, replaced by burning memories of the days strapped to a table in Singe Lab, the chemist's looming face seared into his thoughts. Lost in a world of torment, Warwick could not remember how he fell into Singed hands, or even what existed before his suffering began. Singe meticulously altered him, inserting pumps and tubes that flooded his veins with chemicals, pursuing the ultimate goal of transmutation. Singed sought to unearth the little beast hidden beneath the facade of a good man. The chemicals accelerated Warwick's healing, allowing Singed to reshape his body slowly and painfully. When his hand was severed during the experiment, Singed reattached it, enhancing it with pneumatic claws, inching Warwick closer to his monstrous potential. A chemical chamber was embedded in his back, tied directly to his nervous system, any surge of rage, fear or hatred would trigger a flood of liquid fury, fully awakening the beast within. He endured every cut, every procedure. Pain, Singed insisted, was essential. It was the ultimate catalyst in his transformation. While Warwick's body could heal from most of the physical trauma, the ceaseless agony shattered his mind. Warwick strained to recall even a single memory from his past, but all he could see was blood. Then a sound broke through a girl scream, her voice calling something he couldn't make out. It felt like a name, but his own was long forgotten. Perhaps it was better that way. Soon pain consumed every other thought, blood was all that remained. After weeks of torment on Singe table, Warwick's body and mind were broken, yet he fought against the transformation. Toxin streams from his eyes in place of tears, while caustic flag burned through his chest and ate into the lab's floor. Strapped to the cold metal, Warwick thrashed in agony for hours, until his body could no longer endure. With Warwick's untimely death, Singe discarded the body, tossing it into a pit of corpses deep in Zone Sam, already focused on his next experiment. But death became the final key to Warwick's transformation. As his body cooled atop the pile of lifeless bodies, the chemicals within him completed their work, the chamber on his back began to churn. His body twisted unnaturally, bones breaking and reshaping, teeth growing, and sinews snapping only to heal with a faint alchemical glow. Dead flesh was replaced by something new, something powerful. By the time his heart began to beat once more, the man Warwick had been was no more, his past life erased. When he awoke, pain was all he knew, hunger tore at him, only one thing mattered, he needed blood. Hey there lore lovers, if you are enjoying this journey through Warwick's story, don't forget to give this video a like and share it with fellow lore lovers. Your support helps the channel grow and keeps the lore coming. Now let's dive back into the action. First it was the blood of a nearby Sam Scrapper scavenging through the charnel pile. 
Then came the priestess of the glorious evolved, searching for a last follower. After her, a pilt of an apprentice taking a shortcut, a filter face merchant dodging a gang, a dram dealer, a tallyman, and a camp punk, all fell to his clothes. Warwick made his den near a place that tugged at the back on his now animal mind. There he continued the slaughter, indifferent to who his victims were. As long as blood dripped from his fangs, he felt nothing but a race haze in his mind, the hunger in his gut drowning any sense of guilt for those he tore apart. Yet, even as he surrendered to the beast, fragments of his past began to resurface. He saw a bearded man in the eyes of a beggar whose throat he ripped out, a familiar face, solemn with scars on his arms. Sometimes, as he fed on stray gangers in the shadows, the flash of knives triggered memories of an old bloodied blade. The blood traveled from the blade on his hands and from his hands to everything around him, and sometimes he remembered the girl. And still, there was always blood. It had been with him all his life, he realized, and nothing could wash it away. He'd left so many scars that even he couldn't remember his past, the city would. In the eyes of Zones, criminals, gang bosses, murderers and thieves, he saw himself. The chamber on his back pumped hate through his veins, his clothes ripping out his fingers. He hunted. No longer content to kill randomly, Warwick now targets those already steeped in the stench of blood just as he had been the day he was dragged to Singe door. He still wonders if this was what he truly wanted. Though the details are hazy, he remembers enough, enough to know Singed had been right all along. The good man was a lie, burned away by disaster, revealing the truth beneath. He is Warwick, he is a killer, and there are countless killers to hunt. Assuming that we do not know who Warwick may be in this universe, it is believed that, as a human, he was a selfless individual concerned with the well-being of others and striving to improve himself. Singed even referred to him as a good man. But after enduring Singed's cruel experiments, the old Warwick and his memories were mostly erased, leaving behind a bloodthirsty, wrathful beast. Now trapped in constant agony, Warwick longs to remember his past life, but his chemical mutations make it impossible to seek it out. Despite this, he retains a fierce pride in his zonite roots and harbors a deep hatred for the camp barons and those zonites who have abandoned the undercity for Piltover. Warwick also has a strange fixation on Yordles, viewing them as alpha predators, much like a dog would become distracted by a squirrel. Although Warwick has lost most of his memories, brief flashes of his former life occasionally break through. These lingering memories hold him back from harming innocent people, driving him to target only criminals, those whose hands are stained with blood. So all these, for me, are leading to the fact that Vendor is Warwick, once a leader who cared for innocent lives, he is now struggling to fight the beast, trying to not harm innocent people and keeping that hatred against the camp barons of Zone. Considering only Warwick's relations with other characters, we now know that his existence is closely related to Singed, with Warwick likely supplying Singed with countless test subjects over the years. The potion that Singed created to transform Warwick into a beast may have been derived from Singed's own insanity potion. In his frenzy after the transformation, Warwick even killed and skinned Ulf, sometimes wearing the manatee's carcass as a grim trophy. The chemicals injected into Warwick's body, whenever he catches the scent of blood, combined with Singed experiments, have deeply damaged his mind. His memory of his former life are scars, though he sometimes recalls the cries of a little girl, implied to be Jinx. <coughs> Let me forget. He also seems to have known Vi before she left Zone for Piltover, lamenting her defection. Some speculate that Warwick may have been the one who told Vi how to fight, hinted through one of his quotes and a line in her biography. So who taught you how to punch? The fear in your eyes, I've seen it before. So all these things can only mean one thing. Warwick is Vendor. Thanks for sticking with me, Lord Lovers. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe for more deep dives into your favorite worlds. And don't forget to join our Discord community, we are building a space where Lord Lovers like you can come together to explore, discuss and help shape future content. Let's keep the lore alive.